Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. And this is what I call my morning musings, sharing a great cup of coffee with you. And uh, we are looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 and following. Look, I don't have to tell you, <clears throat> <clears throat> this is one of the most pivotal, foundational texts for all futurist eschatologies. What we are discovering, however, is that Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 and following is saying nothing whatsoever different from what he said in the, in the passages prior to these verses and in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, all of which had a definite first century application and fulfillment. So, I mean, this is remarkable. Well, take a look at verse 14. We've already had pause to look at it a little bit, but look, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Now, this is really interesting, and by the way, I develop it extensively in my book, We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings. When it says, <clears throat> those who sleep in Jesus, he doesn't use the normal Greek word for in, the Greek word N, E, N. He uses the Greek word dia. D-I-A is the way you and I would spell that. And dia means, normally means through. And it can be rendered as many, many scholars have taken note, many linguists have noted, that the significance here means that Paul is talking about those who died through being rela related to Christ. In other words, they're martyrs. They are those who have suffered death, just like those in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, were being persecuted at the hands of the Jews. It is the same context as 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, where Paul says they turned from serving idols to serve the living God, and they did so, quote, in much affliction. Unquote. Now, if this is true, and again, many, many scholars take that very position, it's interesting that Keith Matheson, although he is an opponent of covenant eschatology, he, uh, he didn't see the train coming, as it were, when he made this admission. But he said, those who sleep in Jesus are undoubtedly the martyrs in Thessalonians. Well, thank you. <clears throat> so, if those in Thessalonians are martyrs that Paul refers to in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, then they are unquestionably tied in with Jesus' statement, comment, and prediction in Matthew 24, 29 and following, that in his generation, Israel would fill up the measure of their sin by persecuting his followers. And by the way, that is specifically what Paul said the Jews were doing by persecuting the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 14 to 16. So here is Jesus that said the Jews would fill up the measure of their father's guilt by persecuting his followers in the first century. Paul, writing to the Thessalonians, said that the Jews were filling up the measure of their sin by persecuting the followers of Jesus and that included the Thessalonians. Jesus, in Matthew 23 and 24, said that he would be coming in judgment against Israel. And by the way, that would include the vindication and the rewarding of the martyrs. In the first century generation, again, in the judgment of Old Covenant Israel. And that happened in AD 70. So here is Paul writing about the martyrs at Thessalonica whose martyrdom is filling up the measure of sin on the part of the Jews, filling up the measure of suffering on the part of the righteous. And Paul says, we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. He expected them to be alive until that coming. 
Folks, the fact that Paul writes about those who died through Christ, through martyrdom by being in Christ, places 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 squarely within the context of the coming of the Lord in judgment of Israel in AD 70. And once again, I developed that and a whole lot more in my book, We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings. Go to my website, eschatology.org, BibleProphecy.com. Order the book. Say that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. That'll save you $5. Hey, thanks so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. And yes, we've got a whole lot more. We'll see you on the flip side.